Assalamu alaikum this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy and today we're beginning the anterior triangle of the neck. We've already talked about the posterior triangle of the neck. Now I just want you to know that the sternocleidomastoid muscle of your entire neck is responsible for dividing your neck into an anterior and a posterior part. The one lying anteriorly is known as the anterior triangle consisting of further four triangles and then the posterior triangle posterior to it which we've already discussed. You can go ahead and click on the link in the description for, to watch that video. I just want you to know before we get started is that some complex terms will come. You will uh, come across structures and terms that will definitely overwhelm you and that is because at the start of any region that is completely normal to not know half the things you're studying i have tried my best to make it as simple for you with the mnemonics and with concept but uh, for now even a brief overview of the names of the contents of every triangle are enough for you at this level let's go ahead and get started so the anterior triangle of the neck is lying in anterior to the sternocleidomastoid its boundaries are as follows the medial boundary is basically the median plane that passes uh, in at the anterior side of the neck known as the anterior medium plane of the neck laterally the boundary is the sternocleidomastoid the base of this triangle is formed by the base of the mandible and an imaginary line that joins the angle of the mandible to the mastoid process which is a part of the skull one thing that on the opposite side the similar triangle exists so anterior triangle is on both sides so same for the posterior triangle now let's talk about the further divisions subdivisions of the uh, anterior triangle before i talk about these subdivisions i want you to know a couple of important features here always remember just beneath the submandibular gland region right here is this new bone you don't know much about so i'm just going to tell you it's known as a hyoid bone it lies just beneath your chin within your neck the hyoid bone has a couple of muscles I want you to remember. Coming from the anterior side of the hyoid bone, this is the anterior belly of the digastric muscle and then the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. So this is a muscle that goes like that. It has an anterior and a posterior belly, all right? Uh, and then there is another muscle that comes from below the hyoid bone. This is known as the homohyoid, but it's superior belly because its inferior belly lies in the posterior triangle. So I'll just show it to you over here. This is the superior belly of the homohyoid and you can see this is the inferior belly of it. And apart from that, this is the hyoid bone. You can see this white area and this entire muscle is the digastric muscle. This is anterior and posterior belly uh, so now that you know that you will understand the boundaries and contents of all the uh, triangles better first triangle we're going to talk about is a submental triangle so this is a submental triangle as you can see this is the hyoid bone this is the base of the mandible you can see these are the two anterior belly of the digastric muscle let's talk about the boundaries now on either side of the submental triangle it is bounded by the anterior belly of the digastric muscle its base is formed by the hyoid bone and the apex is the chin where they both meet the floor of this triangle is formed by the mylohyoid muscle. Let's talk about the contents of this triangle. In this uh, triangle, very simple contents lie and very straightforward. So submental lymph nodes lie in this content. If you remember, uh, these were draining your uh, lower territory of the face. Submental veins and these submental veins are forming the anterior jugular veins. That's all for the submental triangle. Let's move on to the digastric triangle. The di digastric triangle has another name called the submandibular triangle. The digastric triangle is, let's see it in from the side because that is a better view. From this side, if you can see, this is the anterior belly of the uh, digastric and this is the posterior belly of the digastric. This is the mandible. So let's talk about the boundaries of the digastric triangle. Anteroinferiorly, posteroinferiorly, and superiorly, or you can say the base. So what do you see? Anteroinferiorly, anterior belly of the digastric, posteroinferiorly, posterior belly of the digastric, and superiorly is the um, base of mandible and that imaginary line that was connecting the angle to the mastoid process. The roof of this triangle is formed by the skin, superficial fascia, and the platysma. Obviously, some other superficial branches of nerves. These are the uh, cervical branch of facial nerve and the transverse cutaneous nerve of the neck after that comes your deep fascia and the deep fascia is basically the fascia that is enclosing the submandibular gland because this uh, digastric triangle is basically also known as a submandibular triangle because chiefly the submandibular gl gland is lying over here and the floor of this uh, triangle is formed by the mylohyoid anteriorly then the hyoglossus and if you can remember you should remember the pharynx constrictor because the pharynx starts posteriorly right so the middle constrictor of the pharynx will come about over here uh, forming the floor posteriorly. All right, now let's talk about the contents of the digastric triangle. Uh, these are going to be the most difficult contents, but I have made a shortcut to memorize this. In the digastric triangle, first I want you to divide this triangle into an anterior and a posterior part. And even in the posterior part, I want you to make three divisions, the so superficial, the deep, and the deepest structures. Let's talk about the anterior part first. In the anterior part of this uh, triangle, uh, I want you to remember this mnemonic. It goes like, the size of the floor is 12 meter. 12 meter is the size of the floor. Remember this mnemonic. Since the area of units is a square, so we're just going to add those squares here. So 12 m s square f square, uh, the 12 meter size of the floor, right? So for this anterior part, I want you to remember the 12th nerve known as the hypoglossal nerve uh, is going to be lying in this triangle. You can see right here, this is the hypoglossal nerve. 
Okay. The M stands for the mylohyoid nerve and vessels, which are going to be going to supply the mylohyoid, which was forming the floor of this triangle. Next is the S square structures. These S, what do you think it can stand for? It's a submandibular triangle. So obviously here is where lies the superficial part of your submandibular salivary gland. And another S is for the submental artery. This right here, you can see going here, is a submental artery going towards your submental region. Next is the F square. F is for the, you remember there was this uh, vessel that was winding around the base of the mandible and entering your face. Yes, the facial artery and the facial vein are the contents. Next, let's talk about the posterior part. Uh, the superficial part of this digastric triangle, its mnemonic goes like PECA. So remember guys, one thing, the major uh, head and neck arteries are the external and internal carotid artery coming from the common carotid, right? So you can see the external going here, internal going here. So most of your contents in the posterior part will revolve around these arteries. You can see this is the triangle, this complete triangle, right? So PECA stands for P is for the parotid gland. Basically what happens, parotid gland, the lower part of it comes into the triangle, all right? So P is for the parotid gland. ECA, we all know what that is. It's the external carotid artery. You can see it's right here in this more superficial part of the posterior part of this triangle. The deep structures uh, I want you to remember are all the stylos, all right? These are all the stylish muscles, stylos. Everything stylo is lying in the deep part. So this goes like the stylopharyngeus, the styloglossus, all of these are related to structures around. So stylopharyngeus is going to the pharynx, styloglossus is going to the tongue, and finally the styloid process. The styloid process comes from the skull and it projects into the digastric triangle. So all the stylos are lying here, plus you're going to add ninth and 10th nerves. Ninth is the glossopharyngeal, 10th is the vagus, more specifically the pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve. Let's talk about the deepest part. This is quite easy because the only thing left is, what do you think, what can you see here? It's the internal jugular vein, internal carotid artery and the vagus nerve. These three structures are going to be lying in the deepest part because because they're internals right that's why they're very deep external is relatively superficial than uh, internal and if you can just uh, remember this take a screenshot of this and remember these mnemonics and these are the easy ways to go move on to the next triangle this is known as the carotid triangle it is lying uh, below the two submental and submandibular triangles you can see right here so you will just describe the structures you'll see as you can see this has an antero superior antero inferior and a posterior boundary the antero superior boundary is formed by what can you see here this is the digastric it's posterior belly uh, remember the posterior belly of the digastric is always joined by its best friend this best friend is known as the stylohyoid muscle stylohyoid is actually quite in love with the posterior belly of the digastric that's why it's always like close antero inferior boundary is by the this is there's a superior belly of the omohyoid muscle and finally posterior boundary formed by the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid the floor of the uh, carotid triangle is formed by the coming closer to the pharynx so the middle constrictor of the pharynx and then the inferior constrictor of the pharynx is lying here and then the thyroid membrane this is forming the floor roof is formed similar skin uh, superficial fascia, platysma, the cervical branch of the facial nerve, the transoscutaneous nerve, and then the investing layer of the deep fascia. Now let's talk about the carotid triangle contents. These are also very, very important contents. During these, I'll try my best that you can somehow get these in your head while watching this video. You do not have to study in torture by yourself. It's known as a carotid triangle because it has the main carotid arteries lying within it. So you can see right here, this is a common carotid artery. It gives the uh, external and the internal carotid artery. You can see these nerves. You can see this is the ansa cervicalis uh, lying over here. This is the uh, upper root and this is the lower root. The upper root of ansa cervicalis is formed by the hypoglossal nerve. This is the hypoglossal nerve coming here. The hypoglossal nerve will give this branch, descending uh, branch that will form the ansa cervicalis. And then you can even see the 10th nerve, the vagus nerve in this triangle. So let's go ahead and now talk about the contents in uh, detail. You should divide the contents into arteries, veins, nerves, and lymph nodes. Simply do that first. In the arteries, what do you think will come here? It's quite uh, straightforward that your common carotid artery and the external internal carotid artery are... Just want you to remember one thing that the external carotid arteries branches will also be included in this triangle. And these branches can be remembered by this mnemonic, the falso branches, the facial, the ascending pharyngeal, lingual, the superior thyroid and the occipital. So if you cannot remember the branches, you can remember this mnemonic for the external carotid artery branches, the falso. Apart from this common carotid and ICA, they're quite straightforward. All right, next we'll talk about the veins that exist in this triangle. It's, it's very easy. It's the internal jugular vein, but I want you to remember the 
clip i use for the internal jugular vein obviously but these veins are also also to be remembered in the contents of the carotid triangle these are the veins draining into the internal jugular vein so these veins are known as the common facial vein I told you how it uh, comes and in, drains into the internal jugular vein it was formed by the anterior division of the retromandibular vein and the facial vein l is the lingual vein and p pharyngeal vein all right these all will drain into the eye the internal jugular vein this is the nerves mainly i've showed you that the vagus and the hypoglossal are over here you want to add some nerves to that you can go ahead and talk about the ansa cervicalis how the hypoglossal nerve is sending a descending branch for the upper root of the ansa cervicalis and you can talk about the vagus nerves branches the vagus nerve gives the superior laryngeal branch and this superior laryngeal divides into its internal and external laryngeal uh, nerves in this triangle so this is the further nerves now let's talk with the lymph nodes. What do you think which lymph node should lie here? It's the deep cervical region. So it's the deep cervical lymph nodes. Cervical lymph nodes are never hard because they're always, their names are the region's name. You can also remember the jugulodigastric and the jugulo-omohyoid lymph nodes. So this was all you need to go the carotid triangle. Let's quickly go over the muscular triangle, the most easy triangle over here. So its boundaries anteriorly is the anterior median line of the neck. Uh, Posterior superiorly, you can see what is this muscle? It's the superior belly of the omohyoid. And Posterior inferiorly is the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. The major content of the muscular triangle is only the infrahyoid muscle. What does that mean? Infrahyoid. Uh, the muscles that are originating from below the hyoid bone and going below the hyoid bone. These muscles are the toss muscles. These go like the thyrohyoid, the omohyoid, you can see here, sternothyroid and the sternohyoid. These are all the triangles of the neck complete. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Until then, thank you so much for watching.